What is up XRP community? Thank you for clicking on my video. Today I have a super interesting story that's trending all over social media in the crypto world about a whistleblower regarding a coin called Avalanche, AVAX. But he mentions in this whistleblowing report, Brad Garlinghouse and says some pretty bad things that Brad Garlinghouse allegedly did. I'm not saying for sure. I also wanna talk about what Brad Garling says in response to this. And then 0.5% of the entire XRP supply, half a billion tokens valued at $161 million were moved recently. We gotta talk about that. And then a Washington, or sorry, Wall Street Journal, uh, not a newsletter, an article from the Wall Street Journal about Ripple and the head lawyer for Ripple, Stuart Alderati claps back at this, all right? So if you guys like this content, you wanna support, hit the like button, it's free. And I really do appreciate it. So if you want to give me a little gift, a present, hit the like button. Let's hop right into it. So let me tell you about this whistleblowing story. You probably don't care about Avalanche, but this stuff is fascinating. Essentially, guys, the founder of the Avalanche token, it's a guy named Goon. He hired this young, smart, psychopathic lawyer. Very smart guy, but you can tell he's pretty evil. And essentially what they were doing is they were suing competitors of the AVAX token. This guy describes litigation, right? The concept of suing someone as the most uncorrelated asset in the world. Like basically the easiest way to print money. He says if he invests, invests two to $3 million in a lawsuit, he can potentially get $230 million back. And he has about 50, 50 chance odds. Um, there's all these videos. I watched all of them. Here's the guy, this young hotshot psychopath um and you can just google these for yourself it's called crypto leaks number three i watched it all but at the end of this um this guy this lawyer this evil lawyer and this could all be fake but he says brad garlinghouse did some bad things um before kyle roche that's the, the young hotshot lawyer before he founded this law firm and made a pact with ava labs that's the people that made avax avalanche token he was relatively low-key associate at this law firm, and that law firm was representing Ripple, who was, as we all know, defending themselves in the lawsuit, claiming their XRP token was an illegal security. Cheers, hope you guys are having a good night. I'm having a little Stella Artois. If you guys like beer, comment your favorite beer below. According to Kyle, the lawyer, he proposed to the CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, that Brad should create a new law firm that would or sorry, that the lawyer on behalf of Brad Garlinghouse would create a new law firm that would specialize in suing others in crypto using exactly the same kinds of tactics that were being used against Ripple. Kyle said that Brad became his angel investor and Brad agreed. One might have expected that Brad Garlinghouse would want less litigation, right? So they're basically saying that Brad Garlinghouse invested in this guy to essentially start these lawsuits because one of the purposes besides money was to get the SEC off the case of, in this case, AVAX and Ripple, right? If the SEC has other lawsuits to deal with, they might not come after your company. So pretty crazy stuff. Now, Brad Garlinghouse commented on this and he said, I can't comment on the validity of these allegations, but I can unequivocally say that I have never met or spoken to, much less invested in, Kyle Roche. Now, what else is he going to say, right? Brad Garlinghouse comes off as a nice kind of soft guy, but he's also the CEO of one of the biggest uh, tech crypto companies in the world. And CEOs are not usually nice guys. Business is a cutthroat industry. And while Brad Garlinghouse gives us this nice portrayal of his personality, we don't really know the guy, you know? So who knows if this is true or not, but what else is he going to say? Of course, he's going to deny it. Um, moving forward, so there was a Wall Street Journal op-ed from Gary Gensler, okay? In summary, Ripple's lead attorney responded Monday today to an op-ed on crypto regulation from the SEC chairman, Gary Gensler, published earlier this month. The dispute in the press parallels the SEC's ongoing enforcement action against Ripple over the XRP token. The lawyer of Ripple says, Mr. Gensler writes, that whether a car runs on gas or electricity, you still need a seatbelt. No one disputes that. But electric cars don't need gas. And in his analogy, it is gas that the SEC is selling. Mr. Gensler looks to punish anyone who isn't buying. Okay. 
Why am I bringing this up? Well, it's in regards to the lawsuit, but it's also the Wall Street Journal, the number one paper in finance, I would argue. Bloomberg is up there in terms of business media, but the Wall Street Journal is second to none. And this is just good publicity for the lawsuit and Ripple overall. Half a billion of XRP, right? There's only 100 billion XRP tokens and half of them are locked up in escrow. So if you consider that half of the XRP supply is locked up in escrow, there's really only 50 billion on the market. So this is about 1% of the supply. That is a crazy amount of money. And look at this guys, at the bottom of this article, we're seeing a lot of whale movements, okay? I know they've been in the headlines lately, but check this, XRP is seeing notable whale activity as well as high optimism. We've picked up a spike in six figure XRP transactions. So XRP transactions of over $100,000. I guess that's what you'd consider a whale. XRP has not seen transactions like this since May 13th. Additionally, XRP investor sentiment is at its highest since April, okay? According to a blockchain tracker whale alert, XRP valued at approximately 161 million was moved from the crypto exchange Kraken to an unknown, unknown wallet. And look how beautiful this is. A transaction of $161 million cost 0. 0.000003 cents, right? If you move that much Ethereum, you're paying a few thousand dollars. You move much, that much Bitcoin, you're paying tens of thousands, maybe a hundred thousand, I'm not sure. I just know the fees are way higher. So just to illustrate XRP's competitive advantage, the guy's moving 161 million and he paid five zeros, one ten millionth of a cent. And that's the beauty of the XRP token. Excuse me, did not mean to do that. Um, and now I wanna show you guys this, okay? This is from the Ripple Swell event and it kind of sums up <clears throat> The XRP Ripple versus the SEC lawsuit by Brad Garlinghouse himself. So, you know, I think it's very clear that uh, the SEC, instead of doing the hard work to define a new set of clear rules, a near, mm. new set of clear regulations, both from the SEC and really the U.S. government in general, they've in instead decided, hey, we're going to do enforcement through, we're doing regulation through enforcement. Mm -hmm. which is not efficient and really has, uh, I think, stifled innovation in the United States. So when you look at how XRP and Ripple are used a lot in Asia, these countries that welcome this innovative technology and this fast cross-border bridge asset that Ripple offers, XRP, um, it doesn't really make sense for the U.S. to not be helping this innovation, right? You would think that we want to stay ahead, right? We have the world reserve currency, the dollar, Cryptocurrency is not going anywhere. It's the next dot-com bubble, whatever you want to call it, the next big innovative boom. And Ripple and XRP are just being stifled. They're being held back. President Joe Biden, not my president, goofy guy, but he made the executive order saying that regulators should collaborate, right? A few months ago, he made this executive order, collaborate on regulation that helps grow innovation, right? They're doing the opposite. So it's interesting to see all these mainstream media sources coming out, attacking Gary Gensler, calling for him to step down. But ultimately, we'll just have to see what happens. If you guys are still watching the video, thank you for making it to the end. Comment beer or wine in the comment section below. Let me know that you got to the end. That really supports the channel and the video. So let yourselves be known. I really do appreciate that. And subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell next to the subscribe button. Hit all notifications. That way you will never miss a beat. God bless you all. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Until next time.